Hi, I would like to welcome you to MOTC Training, Ministry Outreach Training Center. And my name is Ollie Brown, and I will be your pastor and teacher for the next hour as we study prayer. Let's go before the Father in prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, giving you glory, giving you praise and thanksgiving for the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. We thank you, Father God, we will be a doer of the word we hear. And we thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit reminding us, teaching us, and guiding us, and leading us into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So we've been studying on prayer, and prayer is, a, is just fellowship and relationship with God. Commune with him. You know, getting to know him. Prayer is fellowship with the Father, a personal contact with God who is more than enough. You know, he's more than enough. He's, 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 he's a, a, a meet all our needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We are to be in constant communion with God, constant fellowship with him all through the day, just constantly talking to him, listening to him, communing with him, being in his presence, there's fullness of joy, peace. First Peter 3.13 says in the Amplified Bible, for the eyes of the Lord upon the righteous, those who are upright in the right standing with God, and his ears are tentative, open to their prayers. So God hears, hears our prayers if we pray according to his will. Prayer is not to be in a religious form with no power. It's to be effective and accurate and, and bring results. Jeremiah 1.12 says, God watches over his word to perform it. So he watches over, you know, his word won't return to him void, but shall it come to that thing is sent. So when we pray, we pray God's word. We pray, pray uh, a, a prayer of thanksgiving. We give him the glory and praise with the fruit of our lips continuously lifting up the name of Jesus. Prayer that brings result must be based on God's word. See, a lot of people base, base prayer on other things, their emotions, their feelings, their experience. But the prayer should be based, it's absolutely should be based on God's word. He said, he, Jesus said, me and my word are one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we should base our prayers on the truth, on the reality of what he says. Jesus went around doing, doing and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, and we ought to do the same. He said, he said uh, 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 we are to go out in all the world and preach gospel. We should lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Prayer also has to be a, uh, according to knowledge and understanding of who God is. See, you're not going to uh, have no faith in somebody you don't know. You're not going to trust, no, uh, uh, trust him if you don't know him. And when we have a relationship with him, we get to know him and get to know his faithfulness, we're going to have a confidence. And when we have confidence in his, his, his uh, knowing that he is, and he is a reward of those who diligently seek him, we're going to be able to uh, uh, believe and trust in him. Trust the Lord of all our hearts and not lean to our own understanding. We're going to acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our path. So when we pray according to knowledge and we pray according to understanding of, of who God is, of how he is, and what he has done, and, our, and the benefits we have in prayer. It's not just a hoping and a wishing. It's wishy-washy. Our hope and trust and confidence is in him. We pray by speaking God's word. Confessing is saying the same thing God says about what we are praying for. See, we say the same thing. We imitate him. We say the same thing he says. He says uh, 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 um, that the uh, uh, just shall live by faith. We are the just. We're going to live by faith. We're going to live by believing God. We're not going to lean to what we, we, we think or how we feel. We pray by speaking God's word, confessing it, saying the same things God says about what we are praying for. God's word is absolute. His word is spirit and it's truth. His word is spirit and it's truth. God will perform his word. And see, this is the confidence we have <clears throat> in him, that we know that he is a, his word is absolute, that we can have full confidence in what he says. He told us, if you continue my word, you should know the truth. And the truth, his word, will absolutely liberate you. It will absolutely have you walking in freedom. His word. His word won't return to the void. His word is above his name. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. My word, my, my uh, word by no means will pass away. So with our confidence, knowing that he's our source, he's our source in everything. He's our source in peace. He's our source of joy. He's our source of prosperity. He's our source. He's a power of, of prayer is in him. 
And so when we get to know this God of the Bible and get to know our Heavenly Father and get to know his faithfulness, then when we pray, we believe those things we pray for will come to pass. We might not know when it's going to come to pass. We don't know how it's going to work it out. But we know for sure it will happen because this is the confidence we have in him. And so when we get to know him, we base our whole relationship on his love. We base our whole relationship on his faithfulness. We, we base our, our everything because he said it. And he said, he saw what he said. He said, let there be light. And there was light. His word, he said, he stands behind his word with power, ability, and might. God is faithful. So let's turn to John 14, 16. And it says, and we have known and believed the love that God has in us. God is love, and he will abide in love, abide in God, and God in him. 1 John 4, 17. And this is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. As he is, so, so, are, so also are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. How is he? He's absolutely, he's absolutely faithful. He's just. Right now, he's on the right hand side of the Father, interceding on our behalf. And so we're, we, as we, are, we have confidence, we have boldness. We can stand firm in this, stand firm in our faith, not wavering and not doubting and, and not being double minded because he will, he, who, he will, what he says, he will stand behind what he says. But we have a covenant with him. And everything we, he, he have, we have. And everything he can do, we can do. Everything. Say, so can we raise the dead? He says we can. Can we speak to the situation? We can speak to the mountain? Yeah. We can believe those things we say uh, uh, will come to pass and we'll have what's what we say. So what are the, the question is, and I want you to answer this for yourself. Are you standing in faith in your prayer? And when you pray, do you believe those things are going to come to pass? Or you do, do you believe that God is faithful? Or you have, you, do you have your eyes on, on his word? Or do you have your eyes and mind on your circumstances? Now we're going to be talking with last time we talked about praying in the spirit. And we're going to continue that subject today. Praying in, what is praying in the spirit? Praying in the spirit is mentioned three times in, in scripture. 1 Corinthians 14 Three, 15 says so what shall I, I do I will pray with my spirit but I also pray with my mind I will sing with my spirit but I also will sing with my mind uh, another verse was sing with uh, pray with my understanding or sing with my understanding Ephesians um, you gotta remember God made us in his image and likeness. He told us in Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image and our, in our likeness and let them dominate and have dominion of, on all the earth. And then John 4, 24, he said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Ephesians 6, 18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kind of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. In Jude uh, 20, he says, But you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying the Holy Spirit. So what does it, exactly does it mean to pray in the Spirit? The Greek word translate praying in can have several different meanings. It means by being means of, with the help of, and in the connection to. Praying in the Spirit does not refer to the words or we are saying, rather it refers to how we are praying. Praying in the Spirit is praying according to the Holy Spirit leading. It is praying for things that the Spirit lead us to pray for. We pray in the Spirit. We pray in our heavenly language. See, God has given us a heavenly language that the enemy don't ever want us to exercise. You know, God is so complete. He, he, everything he, he, you know, everything is made. He completed everything. He put everything in order. 
He didn't leave anything out of order for us. So we have a heavenly language. We are praying to God. Romans 8, 26 tell us, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We, don't, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. In 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one hears, but in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. And then another verse of that same scripture says, of uh, 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 1 Corinthians 14, 2, those who speak in strange language do not speak to others but to God because no one understands them. They are speaking secret truth by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we are speaking secret truth that no man can understand. We are speaking God. We are speaking to God, our Heavenly Father, in a language, in a heavenly language He devised just for us to commune with Him in the Spirit. We are spirits. We live in a body. We have a soul. So the real me, I have this house that I live in. Earth suit. But the real me is a spirit. And, and I have a, a, a soul, a will, an emotion, intellect. You can't see the real. I'm a spirit. So God has or, or given a, a heavenly language that we can speak in the spirit. Our spirits pray. Our spirit can pray. One of the greatest spiritual exercises there is to pray in tongues every single day. It builds this heavy, it builds you up on your most holy faith, praying the Holy Spirit. It builds you up. So if you're going through something and you're going, you downtrodden or depressed or just don't feel right or worried or whatever's going on, you build yourself up by praying in the Spirit. If it said in Jude, you build yourself up on your most holy faith by praying the Holy Spirit, do you not know it's a good thing to do it? If he says, I'm a, I want to get built up, I want to get fortified, I want to get strengthened in certain areas of my life. So it, my job is to pray in the Spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 15 says, praying in the Spirit with praying, is, uh, it, 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 it says, equate, uh, equate us with praying in tongues. In 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. Also, I will sing with my spirit. And I will sing with my understanding also. If I pray in the spirit, what's my, my spirit prays. The heavenly language God has given us. God has given us it's for us to do it. For us to do. A lot of people think that tongues went out with the early church. But I beg the difference. This is, a, this is the New Covenant, the New Testament. He said, if I pray in the Spirit, my, uh, my spirit prays. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 states that when a person prays in tongues, he does not know what he's saying, since it's spoken in a language he does not know. So when you pray, me, when I pray one-on-one -on -one to God, to, I pray in the Spirit. But if I'm in front of a church setting, if I don't have an interpreter, I won't pray in the Spirit. And that's uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 27 says, If a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at most by three, and that by a chorus, and let it be one interpret. And uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 28 says, But if there is be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. God has everything in place. If I'm going to pray to the congregation, I won't pray in tongues or speak in tongues unless it's an interpretation. But this is a one-on-one -on -one praying in spirit is talking to God, commune, fellowship with God, speaking to God. That's a blessing to me. That really set me free in the area. I can pray the perfect prayer because I'm a prayer card in His will. See, I can't mess up tongues. <laughs> you can't either. We can't mess up. We can't, we can't put in, 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 in any doubt or uh, anything that's not supposed to go in when we're praying in the, in the Spirit. How are we going to pray with all kind of prayers and requests and pray for the saints if no one, including the person praying, understand what he's saying? Praying in the Spirit should be understand, understood as praying in the power of the Holy Spirit by the power of the Spirit according to His will. That's what you understand. 
I'm speaking to God. I'm praying about the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit takes that prayer and put it where he wants to go. The best prayer a person can pray is lift that person up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and pray in the Spirit. It covers whatever it needs to cover. Because a lot of times we don't know what we should pray for. God might put on our hearts to pray for a family that's going through something. I don't know that person, uh, that person, uh, uh, that person's uh, personal business, but I don't have to know. Perfect prayer, praying in the spirit, lifting them up in the spirit. Ephesians six eighteen, praying in the spirit in every situation, every kind of pr- uh, prayer and request there is. For the same reason, be alert for every kind of effort and make every kind of request for all the people of God. It is your spirit praying when you pray in in tongues. The Holy Spirit gives the utterance, but it is your spirit praying. Paul says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. You got to remember, a lot of people forget that we are spirit. We are, we, we, they live in a body. I'm a spirit. I, you know, God has uh, given us, we, are, we have a, a three parts of a being, spirit, soul, and body. And our spirit prays. Our spirit uh, uh, pray, uh, talks to God. When you pray in tongues, your mind grows quiet because you're not praying out of your mind. Pray daily in tongues. Keep your spirit in contact with the Father. It helps you become more spirit conscious. And once your mind is quiet, you become more conscious of your own spirit and of spiritual things. So a lot of times we want to be we in the sense realm all the time. What we feel, what we think, how they treat me, what I want, what I need, how I feel, just all your emotions, what I see. And so when you pray in the spirit, you're, not in, you, you're getting out of the physical. You're in the spiritual realm. Get out of the, we need to get out of the sense realm sometime. When you get out, when, see, when you get out, when you're in the sense realm, you're thinking, of, most of the time when you're in the sense realm, you're thinking about my needs, my wants, my feelings, how they made me feel, me, 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 me. But when you get in the spiritual realm, it's all about God. It's all about what God desires, what God wants. Get out of the flesh realm, get out of the human reason realm. He said, if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we want to be more spiritual minded. And it doesn't take a lot to do it. Just do it. You know, you can walk around the house. You can, you can, people, some people think they have to just be all big, ball, real loud by praying in the spirit. So everybody know they're praying in the spirit. You don't have to be loud. You can be quiet. God hears you. I can be so quiet right now. You can barely hear me. I'm praying. I can, I'm going to show you an example. I'm just praying the Spirit now. God can hear that. I can be walking around in the midst of a crowd. Midst of a huge crowd of people. And I can pray in the Spirit. Especially when people are all, everybody's talking now. I mean, they, all, <laughs> they got phones everywhere. You don't know who's talking to who and what's going on. People are speaking out. You turn around and say, huh? And they're not even talking to you. So you don't get whether, whether people hear you or not. But, it, but you don't have to, if you don't want to be known to be praying in the Spirit, you can be quietly pray. Pray in the Spirit. Uh, and so God wants us to get out of the, get out of the uh, flesh realm, out of the, uh, uh, the my, my need realm. Uh, get out of the, into the, uh, more into the faith realm and into the spiritual realm. Faith, faith is of the Spirit and, that, and that's where we, uh, the greatest things happen. We want to get in that realm where we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And praying in the Spirit will have you very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The more you pray in the Spirit, the more sensitive you will get to the, get in, in line with the Holy Spirit. You'll hear Him better. You'll hear Him talking to you better. Because your flesh is quiet. Your mind is quiet. You can hear Him. It don't have to be early in the morning at 3 o'clock to hear Him either. You know, you, you can hear Him. See, we want to serve God... It says, serve God with your spirit. James 3, 2 says, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, 
able also to bridle his whole body. If you bridle, if you bridle a tongue, you will bridle the whole body, even through the tongue, even though the tongue is unruly, restless, unstable, evil, no one can contain it. That's James 3, 2, and 8. The Word of God says that we can do all things through in Christ that strengthen us. When it comes to bridling our tongue and walking in the Spirit, Paul gives us a very helpful insight in Romans 1, 9, where he says, where he wrote, God is my witness, whom I will serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. So how do you serve with your spirit? See, we are a spirit. We led by the spirit. And when you serve with your whole heart, with all that's within you, your body, your soul and body will get in line with your spirit. Your spirit will rule and reign. When you serve God with your spirit, your, sp your spirit is ruling and reign. Your flesh is un under subjection. Your mind is being renewed through the word of God. Your mind is being renewed so you're, you're growing up in the things of God and your spirit man is taking charge when you serve God in the spirit. Your spirit man is not a baby. Your spirit man, you know, you're not a baby Christian anymore. You start growing up in the things of God because you're serving God with your whole heart, with your whole being, with all of you. Spirit, body, soul, and body. According, because you know your your spirit, soul, and body. According to First Thessalonians five twenty three, it says, "May the the God of peace Himself make you whole in every way, and may your whole being, spirit, soul, and body remain blameless when our Lord Jesus Messiah appear." In First Thessalonians five twenty four, no one, the the one who call you is faithful. And he will continue to be faithful. See, God is faithful. He said, let your whole body, your whole mind, your whole soul, your whole being, your spirit, soul, and body serve him. See, when you, when you get on one accord and your spirit man is following after the things of God and your spirit man is being led by the Holy Spirit, you're walking in the spirit. And you're serving him in the spirit. You're serving him. You start growing up in the things of God. No more children taught them to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You start growing up. And you see, you're going out and doing the work. You see, when you yield it to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells you to do things. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And these signs will follow those who believe in his name. You start doing the work. It's in the greater works. You start listening to the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, serving him in the Spirit. What do you need for me today, Lord? What do you want me to go today, Lord? It's all about him. It's not about us. It's not about my want. It's not about my forward no more. It's about his will. Where do you want me to go? You want me to go to the mission, Lord? Oh, you want, what do you want me to do? Oh, you'll lift that family over there up. What do you want me to do, Lord? Where do you want me to go? And say we'll start being obedient to the things of God. When we serve God with our whole heart, we will serve God in our spirit. Spirit man is not a baby. Spirit man is growing up or grown to the point where it's, it's being obedient to the things of God. When I was studying that, I was thinking, but how you serve God your spirit? Because you are a spirit. We live, we get our body mixed up. This is our earth suit that we live in. It says, uh, 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 if he, let's go to Galatians uh, 6, 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever man sows, that he will also reap. For he sows to his flesh, will reap uh, corruption from the flesh. But he sows to the spirit, will reap life everlasting from the spirit. But you should not lose heart in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint, give up, or quit. So when we, we, we're led by the Spirit and do the things of the Spirit, we, we don't, don't get weary in well-doing when you've been led by the Spirit and doing what you're supposed to do. Don't get weary. Don't get weary when you're looking for your prayers for the manifest and they haven't quite manifest yet. Stand firm, firm in the faith. Praise God. 
Keep, uh, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Keep your eyes upon his word. Keep your eyes on fellowship with him. He said the spirit of Christ dwell in your spirit. He empowers you from within your spirit. Learning to yield to your spirit is learning to yield to the empowerment of Christ within you. Learn to fellowship and yield to the pumping of the Holy Spirit within your own spirit will lead you and empower you to bridge and control and start speaking life to your life and instead of death to your life. Praying and see, see a lot of time when you when you pray in the spirit, you pray, you pray when you get, get in your heart. I'm praying to, I'm talking to God, I'm speaking to God, I'm fellowship with the Lord. I don't know what I need to pray for. So I'm going to pray in the spirit. My spirit prays. My understanding is unfruitful. My understanding, don't, I don't know what I'm saying. But I don't need to know what I'm saying. There's a freedom in that. There's a lot of freedom in that. Because I know that I'm praying according to God's will that he hears me. Because I'm praying in the spirit. I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. And I can pray as long as I want. Or as sure as I want. Some people say, I'm going to pray all day long. You don't have to pray all day. If you want to pray all day long, you can. You can pray in the Spirit all day long. As you go by your day, you can be in your office. You can be, you can be just most, most jobs, you can pray in the Spirit. Most jobs, you can pray in the Spirit while you're doing your housework. You can pray in the Spirit just when you shop. You can just pray in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit have many benefits. Uh, um, so that's why it's so important. Uh, number one of your benefits, you know your spirit is speaking directly to God. I think we got that. Bible tells us for the, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For I pray in tongue, my spirit prays. Another, another benefit, your spirit is praying. Praying in tongues can also be a two-way street. So what do you mean by that? When you pray in tongues, God will often give you wisdom and insight and clarity about situation and circumstances. You may not know what to do. You may not know how to, how to uh, 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 buy something. I know that I ask the Lord a lot when I be doing uh, um, jobs in my house, doing what do I do? What do I, how do, who do I, who do I get to do this, Lord? What contractor or what person do I get to uh, 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 fix this? Because sometimes you, you got, uh, and, and, and I don't speak negatively, but you have to be mindful uh, 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 that there's people out there that try to merchandise women or take advantage of women in business. But you pray in the spirit and depend on God, they can't, they, can't, they can't trip you out because the Holy Spirit is going to make you aware of stuff. They can't do that. So God says, so uh, he'll, he'll give you uh, wisdom and insight to see better ways of doing what you need to do. Better ways, give, give you clarity on a situation you're confused about. And there's, you know, uh, they're not certain about. And you pray in the spirit, there's clarity. You just know, okay, Lord, you just... Everything clears up. You got, in, you got insight. You got wisdom. Wisdom rushing in. And you got it. You'll know, I'm going to get that person. The Holy Spirit can tell you, and sometimes he just, he just bring it to you. you. Or you just know. You know that you are praying according to the will of God. And that's in Romans 8.27. It said the Holy Spirit make intercession for the saint according to the will of God. So when we pray in the Spirit, we are praying the will of God. Because the Holy Spirit makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You may be often be tempted to pray for what you want or always uh, be me, 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 and not pray for other people. So uh, 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 God will uh, um, get you to see the need of another person. He'll get you off of you. When you pray in the spirit a lot of time, you'll, you'll be more concerned. He'll, he'll say, oh, pray for that family. And you'll hear him and you'll begin to pray. Or the president. Or the Congress. Or the police department. 
You be on TV sometimes, things happen on TV, and you, you're prompt right then to start interceding and start praying in the spirit for the people in the flood. Or, you know, it's hard to look at, even, even sometimes the story, <laughs> stories be on, and I, don't, I know they're not true. I forget sometimes, and I start praying for the people. <laughs> it's a movie. It's not really happening, it's just people, you know, acting out. And I'm beginning to pray for the people. And I said, oh, but it's good practice. I don't apologize for it because in times I'm, uh, it could be a situation that I don't even know that's similar to the, what I'm looking at on that movie that's really happening. So I'm praying in spirit anyway. I lift that up. So praying, uh, 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 even if you, in, even in prayer, prayer, your words produce either death or life. And that, that was a kind of like, a good rhema word for me because a lot of times people when you pray when you pray normally uh, uh, you forget them you know about death and life is in power of the tongue but you don't think about death and life being the t- power of your tongue in prayer but death and life is in the power of our tongue even in our prayer we still want to pray according to God's word prayer uh, uh, praying God's uh, solution from the word release life but praying negative and focus on your problem uh, uh, produces death. More people talk about their challenges, their problems. They go on and on to the break of dawn. And they, the molehill gets bigger and bigger. And before you got a full-blown mountain, you got Mount Everest, you got, you got big things. I mean, it gets worse and worse and worse. Sometimes people tell their testimony or their trial, and they'll talk about it, and it gets worse. Even, I heard that before, but they add to it. And they blow it up and it gets bigger. And they rehearse in death. Because they speak in death. It might have been a, a truth at the time, but that was 20 years ago. You keep talking about the problem. Uh, 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 many people who think they're praying are really just griping, murmuring, and complaining. That I know the, um, I had an incident with this lady years and years ago, a few years ago. And I used to work with her. And I had an opportunity to get back with her uh, not too long ago. The same complaints, the same problems, the same trials, the same uh, confusion, everything she talked about five years prior, she picked it up just like you just pick it back up and continue. I was at the table with her, and she was just, and I'm going, wow, that was so sad to me. That was so sad that she hadn't grown no more than where she was. She's still talking about the same issues that had her held her bound back then. And she's still talking about it. And then she continues five years later talking about the same issues. So Lord, I'm going to have to lift her up in prayer. See, you have to get this engrafted word, this implanted word, get this teaching inside of you. Out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks, or her heart, her mind hadn't been renewed in the things of God. So she still, she hasn't released some stuff. She hasn't forgiven some stuff. And the same thing was going on and on. And we don't want to be that person. We don't want to be like that. We want to bless people who persecute us and come against us. We want to pray the prayer that uh, God said, pray for them. Why? The prayer is for you. You don't want you to walk in unforgiveness. So it's a God, it's a, you bring your tongue into subjection to God when you pray in the spirit. According to James 8, 3, 8. No one can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of poison. But when you speak in tongues, you are submitting your tongue to God. Isn't that something? When you're praying in tongues, you're submitting your tongue to God. It also, uh, spirit edifies you. It says, he who is speaking in tongue edifies himself. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. And 14, 18 says, I think, that's Paul speaking, I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than you all. So it edifies. It builds you up. It stimulates your faith. But when you beloved, it, 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 beloved building yourself on your most holy faith, Praying the Holy Spirit. So it builds you up. It builds your faith. It stimulates your faith. 
All that. Pray in tongues. Never thought about all that. It builds your, it says, it says, it says in Jude, building, up, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. It builds you up on your most holy faith. Praying the Holy Ghost. So if you if you if you've been uh, going through yourself struggling with doubt and unbelief, speaking tongues, your faith will be stimulated. If you're going through a lot of challenges with with with, with your self self image, or your with going through a lot of stuff with your self depression and self self, start praying in the Spirit, because He said, "Build you up." It builds you up in your most holy faith, praying the Holy Spirit. So if I, and the word of God tell me it builds me up, guess what? I need to exercise that in order to receive what he says. He builds it up, it builds me up. You know you are uh, giving thanks well to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 to 17 assures you that when you speak in tongues, even no one around you understands what you're saying, you're giving thanks well to God. It's, it's glorifying God, building up, talking to Him. It's also refreshing. It'll refresh you. If you be tired and weary, it refreshes you. I know it, 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 it gives me strength and vitality, and it gives me lots and lots of energy. Get up in the morning and pray in the Spirit a while. I mean, it gives me energy. So why are you so energetic? I'm, praying the Spirit will energize you. It will absolutely stimulate you. It will grow you. It will motivate you. It will give you clarity in decision making. It will give you wisdom in making decisions. It will strengthen the, your, your, your inner man. It will strengthen you to go through this stuff. And so, well, wow, I didn't realize. Yeah, all that's going on in, in the Spirit. Uh, for one, the, the fruit of the Spirit is released in us, which has supernatural and uh, manifested effort, effect on our attitude and personality that are given off by Him resting in us and on us. So, there's a lot we can achieve being in the Spirit, it, it praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit give us wisdom, give us even more of an advantage over spiritual warfare, causing us to be built up, edified. Now, spirit man is able for us to stand. It enables us to stand in the liberty, stand and believe in God. Stand. When things are all around you going haywire and God says stand, it gives us, a, it, it, it helps us to stand. So we know uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, but God has revealed them to uh, them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deeper things of God. What more He cares? The Spirit of God also know His will for our life. So when we when we get a closer relationship with God, and spirit and pray in the Spirit more, and and, and intercede for other people, and and stand and believe God, see can, Satan cannot understand what we're saying. When we're speaking in spirit, when we pray in the spirit, he cannot. That's our heavenly language. He can he can understand what we're saying when we're praying and understanding, but he can't understand. That's why a lot of time it, people have to they fight against it. The world uh, 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 they put it out there. A lot of a lot of uh, churches, a lot of people been deceived by. Uh, they say we're not with the early church and and they don't believe in tongues and they don't believe it because they don't believe it. It don't it doesn't make it not true. It's true. I believe in it. I remember years ago I was I was a babe in the Lord and I was really um this pastor this minister was ministering to me every day. I would listen to the radio at, at work. I would listen to his his uh, program. And one time I praise God he went this route because I listened to him no more. He said the tongues let the sheep go and the goats go bad. That tongue business went out for the early when I was went out early church. He's just talking a lot of gooby goo. And I said, click, that's it. I turned him off. Because I, I, I was glad he told me, because I, I didn't know I was a babe in the Lord, and I, I, I didn't know a lot of things he wouldn't. If he was wrong on that point, how many more points were you wrong on? 
So I don't listen to people go against what God said. God said I was talking to him. Guess what? I believe it. He said I'm building myself up my most holy faith, praying to the Holy Spirit. That's I believe it. That's uh, 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 when you, uh, the, this gives the upper hand on the advantage of surprise. Praying in the Spirit directed to God, no one can understand the mysteries you are praying. When you pray in the Spirit, you are getting out the big guns. You're getting you ready. You know, I don't know what the big, anybody know what the big guns are? I'm not a gun person. <laughs> you don't have no BB gun. And you, you, you ain't got no slingshot. You get that the big, you got the, you got the 747, um, that's a plane. <laughs> You got the Mac. I don't know the guns. I said I was going to go with this. But when you're getting at the big, the weapons. The weapons of our warfare now come up mighty and tearing down strongholds. So we can tear down strongholds and people in your life in the spirit realm. We can tear down things going on in the, in the spirit. I know that God can wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and he said pray. Because he had woken waking me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said pray. He said pray. And I said that must be Satan, because he would say this so, so forceful and sharp. He said, Satan don't ever want you to pray. I said, pray. What would you do if you don't speak in tongues? If he wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, pray. What would you, how would you pray? But he woke, woke me up, and I know I went in spirit. I went in tongues, and I'm old Lord Raj, and I prayed till I, it was until he told me to stop. He could have woke up 15,000 people at that same hour to pray. I don't know what was going on. I don't need to know what's going on. I know for one thing, he told me to pray. See, you got more weapons. You got more, you got, you got more weapons, more things to fight with. If I pray in tongues, my spirit prays. My mind is unfruitful. So we already know that your mind is it's not involved in it. Build yourself up. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The only way you can speak in your heavenly language is that you must be born again. You can't speak in his heavenly language if you're not born again. Praying in, this, in the Holy Spirit is praying to God in your heavenly language. And you have to be born again to do it. Try to speak to your heavenly language tongues without being born again. You are setting yourself up for defeat and disappointment. Once you are born again, you, meaning you already confess Jesus as Lord over your life, according to Romans 10, 9, 10, the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you. Not next week, or next month, or next year. The moment you confess Jesus and truly believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you are the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Acts, let's turn to Acts 2, verse 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost fully came, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it, was fill, it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there was appeared unto them clothes, clothed tongues like as a fire, and it was set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Notice that word began, that means praying in tongues didn't stop. It continued. The devil wants to rob people of this gift because he knows you'll never be defeated. He knows you have power and he can't understand what you're saying. He want to know, he want to find out what you're saying at all times. And when you start talking in a language he can't understand, he can try to come get people to believe it's not right. It's not, it's not, a, we're not in the early church and that's, that's, it's old. It's not, it's not no longer a uh, part of, of, the, of the covenant part of the word. The devil doesn't understand this language. The devil have no access to your conversation when you're praying to God and the Holy Spirit. One may ask the question, as a born again believer, do I have to pray in tongues? No. You don't have to pray in tongues. You don't have to pray in tongues to be saved. You see, you receive your salvation by confessing with your mouth and believing your heart that God raised you Jesus from the dead, receiving Jesus as Lord. Tongues is a, a gift that you can exercise a, a, a part of your salvation. In other words, it's like once you become born again, you, have a, 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 you don't have to receive the, 
of the gift of tongues if you don't want to. You don't have to believe that you're, Jesus made, became poor so you become rich. You don't have to receive the things of God, but God wants you to. I, I mean, you know, I was called the greedy baby for years when I became a, 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 in the family of God. I, you know, I served the devil. I, I was in the world with no hope and no God. But when I came in the kingdom of God, I wanted everything that God had for me. I wanted. I wanted to operate in everything. I wanted to know. I wanted all of it. I want to be involved in it. I want, I want the whole package. I don't want nothing short change, a shortcut. I want to serve him with my whole heart. I want to serve him. I want to serve him with my spirit. I want to serve him with my mind. And I want to serve him with my body as going to and for doing what he wants me to do. Because my body is going to carry my spirit around. I want to serve him. I want, I, 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 and so this is a personal choice. It's choose this day where you're going to serve. You choose. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, 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 speak in tongue. Praying in your heavenly language has many benefits to the believer. We already talked about some of them. We're going to go over some of them. Uh, uh, praying tongues uh, give you a, a perfect prayer. That's, that's a blessing. We don't know what we need to pray for, but the Holy Spirit does. He, the Holy Spirit, will build, will build you up in your most holy faith. Stimulate your faith and keep you in the love of God. He, the Holy Spirit, will show you things to come. He, the Holy Spirit, will lead and guide you into all truth. He, the Holy Spirit, will empower you to be a witness. That's Acts 1 8. He, the Holy Spirit, will uh, uh, reprove you. Uh, 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 no, we're going to do that one. The tongues are for the spiritual edification. Praying tongues is praying in line with God's perfect will. Praying tongue is a means of keeping you free from worldly contamination. <laughs> It'll keep you free. And that's uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 28. Praying tongue enables us to pray for the, for the unknown, for people we don't know, for things, situations, and circumstances. Praying tongues will give us wisdom, insight, clarity in situations that we don't have no answer. We don't have no knowledge to do it. I know quite a few times in my life I prayed in the spirit. I was going through some things and I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to deal with certain things. And God would send somebody or tell me to call a certain person. After I prayed, he said, call that one. They got what you, they, they got, talk to them about this situation. You want me to call them? I said, he said, call them. I know that I know a time I've called some people, and I didn't think in my own mind that they knew that had that information. Because you don't know what people have. You don't know what God, how God uses people. You don't know all all the things about people. But when you pray in the Spirit, and God tell you to call a certain person because they got the answer, what you need to hear. What you gonna do? You gonna call that person? You gonna call him? And then when I did call him, I was just surprised. The Holy Spirit told me to call you. And I gave him the, I asked the question and they gave me the answer. I said, wow. And then in my, my, in my own mind, I'm saying, man, I didn't know you were that smart. <laughs> I didn't know they, they had that knowledge, that information. And really, I was saying, I didn't know they were that smart. Because they wasn't, they wasn't a person, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a person I would have called in my own mind. But see, that's the Holy Spirit. He knows everybody. He knows everybody. He knows everything. Praying in tongues bring the untamed natural tongue under subjection. Praying in tongues help us to intercede for others. You know, that's good news. We don't know what we need to pray for. Lord, lay some person on their heart and say, Ooh, they've been thinking about them for two weeks. You didn't call. You didn't pray. And they were on your mind constantly. Just kept coming up. Just kept coming up. If they keep coming up, something is going on. I pray, begin to intercede, just go in the spirit, lift them up, lift their family up.
You don't have to even call if you don't want to. Just start praying. You may not ever hear about what went down. You may not, it doesn't matter. But if somebody keeps coming up in your heart all the time, pray for them. Lift them up. Encourage them. Praise God. It says, uh, thank God we don't have to tarry for the Holy Spirit. We don't have to tarry for speaking in tongues. It's a gift. All you got to do is open your mouth. Father, I am born again, therefore I expect to receive the gift. And, and what I expect is for the Holy Spirit to give me the utterance as I provide the voice. Luke 11, 11 said, the father, What father of you, if he had a son, asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would give him a snake or for a fish? Or if he asked for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If then being evil, that means a natural man, know how to give, uh, to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So all you have to do is open your mouth and believe, begin to open your mouth and believe that you're going to be speaking the heavenly language God has all given you to speak. All you got to do is, Father, I'm opening my mouth and by faith. And I believe that I'm going to be speaking to you in Jesus' my name. That's what I did. I opened my mouth and the person said, just say, speak to your father. He will provide it. You open your mouth and say, Father, I desire to speak to you. Open your mouth and speak now to your heavenly father in a language he provided for you to speak to him. In Jesus' mighty name, all you got to do is open your mouth. Open your mouth and speak. And if it sounds like it's fine. Because you're a brand new baby and speaking in the heavenly language. It will mature and it will grow. Because I just open my mouth, mouth and goodbye. 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 And you believe, standing on God's word, and you thank him, Father, I thank you that I'm speaking in the language you provided me to speak. Because I'm not speaking to nobody but you. In Jesus' mighty name, practice it. Speak it. You're talking to God and not to man. In Jesus' name, amen.